what does what values does uh, Eric Jewell represent, and what does his victory tell us about the KMT and its membership? I think Eric Jewell probably just in brief represents stability and continuity. Uh, stability, as in KMT's party unity, um, for a long time it's been seen as the establishment candidate, or almost a candidate of inevitability, almost. And uh, he's been considered the heir apparent uh, to the last KMT president, President Ma, for more or less a decade already. And if you look at um, those people who stand behind him, around him during election rallies, you, see, you can see that he has very bifactional, almost omnifactional support, uh, more than any other candidate in the race this time. Uh, so that's the unity part. And I think in terms of policy stance, again, he represents some, probably the closest thing to President Ma Ying Zhou's uh, stance on Taiwan's position in US-China uh, relationships. The slogan people often refer to is Qing Mei He Lu, or basically staying on the good side of both US and China. And that's been a position for President Ma and also for Mr. Chu as well. I mean, you mentioned the issue of China. I mean, very highly significantly, uh, Eric Zhu exchanged letters with uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping, uh, with Xi congratulating him on his uh, his victory. Uh, I mean, what does this mean for Eric Zhu's approach to ties with China? And, and how do you expect uh, the party's approach to China-Taiwan ties to change uh, under his leadership? Given that President Tsai Ing-wen, the current um, DPP president, represent a more U.S.-heavy approach. So Eric Chu will represent a revision from that, uh, moving closer to the center, if not the center, and slightly China-friendly side in that sort of U.S.-China spectrum. Uh, he also represent a slight uh, revision to the Chinese side of the spectrum, even compared with the current chairman, um, Johnny Chang, uh, Jiang Qichen, for example. So the KMT has been out of power now for, for five years, at least at the presidential level and, and legislative level. Um, what are its strengths right now electorally and, and what are its weaknesses? I think KMT's main strength lies in its ability to secure greater buy-in from Beijing. Given that KMT does have the word Chinese in its name, for one thing, and that the KMT uh, almost universally within the party endorses the 1992 consensus, which represent a however loose embrace of the one China idea in some shape or form. So as a result, um, KMT can come up with Crush their policy that may seem uh, in the policy substance level not too different from the DPP, um, but KMT will get much greater benefit of the doubt from the Beijing side, which means that um, in terms of cross relations and KMT government often will be in a better position uh, to kickstart a virtuous cycle in a sense with Beijing. In terms of weakness, the weakness is clearly that given that US and rivalry is heating up, um, there's much stronger pressure to choose size, so to speak. And so when KMT does secure a stronger benefit of the doubt from Beijing, that can also mean that it has a little bit more work to do in terms of securing comparable level of uh, trust from Washington. And I think that's something they're working on, and that's something that Eric Chu, with his US PhD, his US experience, uh, try to sell to not just the KMT primary voters, but to the Taiwanese electorate uh, as well. Looking forward to the the election in 2024, what will Du and the KMT have to do to win over Taiwanese voters? Um, I think the main thing is that they need to find a way to convince the Taiwanese voters that um, that traditional approach of Qing Mei He Lu, or being friendly to both US and China. They need to convince the voters that that approach is still viable in the era of escalating US-China rivalry. Uh, because that approach worked pretty well from about 2008 to 2016, give or take, under the previous KMT president, President Ma Ying-jeou. And that had one underlying uh, condition, and that is, or that was, uh, the US engagement of China. When U.S. stop engaging, uh, start using engagement as a primary uh, position towards China, it creates problem then for Taiwan's engagement-oriented approach towards China as well. Uh, at what point will engagement of China be seen as accommodationism or as some kind of opportunistic bandwagoning, and to what extent will it raise will it raise um, 
concerns or a need for reassurance uh, from Washington. Uh, I think that's uh, that's a concern that um, KMT will need to figure out and need to convince the, both Washington and especially the Taiwanese voters of uh, going forward as they face 2022 and 2024 as well.